£600 for the 32GB 1TB version. Snapdragon X Elite laptops are now affordable enough, but is Windows on ARM ready yet? That's a question that I want to answer for myself and to share with you here on this channel. So I went ahead and bought this. This is a Dell Latitude. 7455. This is a refurbished model, Dell certified, and it cost in the region of about £500, but originally they were in the region of £1,000. I'm a Dell Latitude user at school, and I don't really like it because of the plastic build, but this is totally different. This is an all metal build, but I'm not going to be really reviewing the laptop itself. I'm going to be reviewing the chipset and the Windows on ARM experience. I was very excited by the Snapdragon X Elite chips at launch, but they were just too expensive for me to justify at the time. I think most people think that they haven't really lived up to the hype, but the core promise of something cool, something quick, something really nice to type on, but also powerful, something for writing, for video calls, for emailing. If it can do all those things right, then maybe this is actually a good choice for many of us. I've got just one USB-A and a 3.5 on that side, and I've got two, I think they're both Thunderbolt 4, I could be wrong on this side, and a micro SD card. This power supply has not been pre-loved, I can tell you that. It's just not how you look after a cable. <laughs> Quite like the way it raises up there, so it should give it a bit more airflow at the bottom. See the big grill there. And that matte finish on the screen is pretty nice if I just try and catch that light there. So I have been absolutely loving my latest purchase, the GPD Win Max 2. It's great, it's great docked, it's great handheld, it's great really for power everywhere. It's wonderful for just chucking in your bag, but the one place it's not great is on your lap. The keyboard is a little bit too cramped and it just sort of, yeah, it's not wide enough to sit between your two legs, so you can't really get into that comfortable lap position. So this PC is, I hope, just going to be a nice place for typing, emailing, video calls, anything like that. But if it still lives up to the core promise of being cool to the touch, for being a useful place for Microsoft Office productivity suites like that, with a really long battery life, to be a light laptop, and this one isn't all that light, unfortunately. If that's still right, then this might still be a great laptop for business use or for personal computing. But I want to know whether compatibility issues are still gonna plague it, even for those quite simple demands. So I've got a Dell Latitude. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's got the one terabyte driver. It's the Snapdragon X Elite 80 to 100 with the dual core boost thing, whatever that does. I'm interested by this. I'm skeptical, but I am interested and I want to bring that as a sort of review for you guys as well. The Copilot Plus features and how they integrate with Windows now. As I think after the hype, I don't think it's been covered all that much where Windows is going with this. And Windows on ARM, as I say, I want to know all about it. So I'll be back with my full thoughts on this after having used it for a bit of time. So these are my thoughts on this Snapdragon X Elite laptop after using it for a week or so now. The keyboard is acceptable. I'm really pleased about that. It's not quite the amazing experience that you might be after. It's not quite your typist dreams, like the EPAMaker TH80 Pro here that I have when I plug this in to my little Thunderbolt dock here. It is, however, just streets ahead of my school Dell Latitude. I mean, these are mushy keys. These are actual, I guess, chiclet, but you know, they feel nicer to type on. And this one, the school laptop, is a Core i3. I had some really frustrating times with it today. You can see it's quite a bit thicker as well. And it's an all plastic rather than an all metal build. So two laptops with very similar names. Latitude 5440 plays the Latitude 740. 55. Very different experiences. No fingerprint scanner on this school one either. What was a surprise though was the Geekbench scores. I mean, it's quite stupendous really. 2,687 single core score and 14,614 multi core score. That's better than the i9 down here. Nobody's surprised too much about that. More than double the multi core score. It's way better than the 155H, the Ultra 7 in my MSI, and it's better than the Ryzen. 9 HX 370 as well and that's significant however the GPU score is only 20,000 points 20 21,000 points 
that's only a little bit better than the B-Link that I use with the 6600H. So not great there. And the 4070 obviously blows that away as well, but so does the 1050, which is in my i9 desktop. And certainly the GPU in the Ryzen 9 HX 370 is way above that as well. So great processor, not great graphics. And that really is the story here. They marketed these as a productivity place and they marketed them as a sort of creator's dream. You want a great graphics card in a creator laptop. Now it's also impressively fast RAM, 32 gigabytes on my version at 8,500 megahertz, which is incredible really. That's even faster than the GPD. So we are both using soldered RAM, so you can't upgrade that, but get enough RAM for the future, and you get to enjoy that amazing fast RAM speed, which is a good time in productivity apps, as well as for more of a creative use case, which is why I bought the GPD with the Ryzen 9 HX370. But for quick multitasking, this has been great. Now, I also definitely saw that NPU fire up, which was something that I wanted to see. I wanted to explore the use of that. However, and it is running its little recall thing. It just took a screenshot just there. Oh, this is interesting. Does it take a screenshot of every single monitor when it's loaded up like this. Well, I'll put one note up there on this third monitor. And if I see a screenshot of that, it seems to me most of what I can do is just kind of copy out of here. But I have tried to search for things that I've done before. So for example, search for setting up a NAS. It's got several with the NAS on one side. But can it actually give me some answers about that? Here's where right now the AI features in Windows, they just don't add up. They're not adding to making my life a whole lot easier to use. And I'm still finding the best sort of text generation, the best idea generation, the best thinking is still on OpenAI. And then I have to still copy and paste, even in native Windows desktop apps, I still have to spend a lot of time copy and pasting and reformatting to put that into a usable document format, to put that onto a PowerPoint, for instance. AI, we just need AI to be taking more actions. Yes, there we go, it has definitely taken some screenshots of the external monitors, so no need to worry on that account. I think that there's so many different AI features there and cool is happening on device, but I just don't know that I'm getting much benefit from it. I mean, cool, I guess it's staying locally, those screenshots, they're being analyzed on device. And it will remain to be seen whether that does give me that benefit of excellent battery performance because it's doing those AI tasks on the MPU rather than the GPU. So I had a look in Microsoft Store now, if you go on any Windows PC, you should see AI Hub there. And this is their kind of like, their certified AI apps really. And when I saw this, I thought that's wonderful. These are things that will definitely get the most out of my AI PC. They'll definitely get the most out of having that MPU with all those tops, but they're not necessarily. These are just AI enabled apps really. And there are now a lot of them. And I'm really looking forward to even Photoshop doing things on device using that MPU, but it's not there yet really. There's some seemingly generally useful things, for instance, Be My Eyes, using AI features on here to actually make this a much more usable experience for somebody who's visually impaired. Those things are wonderful. I tried Gamma. I think that is one of the best sort of PowerPoint makers that you can get right now. I've really actually found one of the best things for making PowerPoints was using the Rabbit's intern feature on their Rabbit Hole, which actually you can try without even using this. If you just go to Rabbit Hole and make yourself an account, you can use their AI intern three times a day. Anyway, I digress back to the actual PC. So that magic search thing didn't go very far. It did use the MPU, but then it actually came back with an error message, which was really frustrating. It did pull out some screenshots. I even then tried the co-pilot voice chat, which was absolutely useless. I like the fact that this is a touch screen as well. Can you tell me how I can use Copilot to actually make changes in my OneNote notes, please? Hey Kit, what's up? Can you change the note problem solved to add some notes about issues with distractions from mobile devices? Sure thing. Copilot can add notes about distractions from mobile devices to your problem solved note. Give me a bit more info on what you'd like to add and we'll get it done. Can you add some common issues people have with their mobile devices? People often get distracted by mobile devices due to constant notifications. That's fine, so just add that straight to the note, please, in OneNote. I can't directly make changes to your OneNote notes, but you can add those points to the problem solve note, mentioning how notif- 
So you see, it's just not joined up. It needs to be there. It should be there already. And actually the Copilot voice app was absolutely useless. In one conversation, it denied this afterwards, where I was asking it about things that use the MPU on device. I asked it if I could have a conversation with it in the background so I could use things on screen. It gave me a really terrible answer. And then it told me that I should go to Apple support to find out how to use it quicker. It told me that I should hold down shift if I wanted to go faster. Is that like in a, a computer game or something, like the run key? I don't know. So amazingly enough, as I say, it told me Apple help would be very useful if I wanted to find out more on how to optimize my device. It actually told me to go to Apple support. I was shocked. Uh, the disk speeds, exactly what you'd expect from fast NVMe drives on PCIe 4. Looking at the sort of 5,000 megabytes per second. And yeah, they performed really well doing all the things that I've expected of them. Now, for me, the biggest question here is, do you really need something this powerful in basically an office and email PC? Because this is a really good office and email PC. The native Microsoft Office apps work really well on here. There's never any slowdown. I could see this as being an absolutely great place to work on all of my presentations. Brilliant. And the question is, does the AI stuff actually get useful anytime soon? And the second question is, does it stay quiet enough and cool enough during normal office stuff? And the answer to that is yes. The answer to that is I have really enjoyed having this just ready to go, picking this up, expecting it to have plenty of battery life at any given time, expecting it to last for any length of session, typing on my lap, it's been really good. So for me, they've really marketed these computers wrong. This isn't for the creators, not yet at least. Maybe it will be once we get native creator apps on Windows on ARM. So Geekbench multi-core, 15,710, that's their marketing. Yeah, it's true. It does multi-core above the Ryzen 9 HX 370 and well above the Intel. Yeah, so X Elite, top coders, editors, and creators. X Plus, travel blogging, music production, graphic design, Sure, you can do those things, but it isn't the tip top for those. I would say though, for a office use for a business laptop, this is absolutely brilliant. This is really for the people who don't know to shut down their computer every evening. The people who don't care to. This is for the people who want to use their PC like they do their phone, never turn the thing off. They want to have their browser open with a million tabs open, not because they want to go back to them necessarily, but because this is the 21st century and they shouldn't have to think about things like that. The computer should just be working. And so I'm gonna treat it like that. I'm going to treat it just as my carrier everywhere and use it incidentally at a moment's notice, not chained here to my desk, but carrying it through to sit on my lap on the sofa. I'm going to use this laptop like they should have positioned it. And so far, the outlook is really, really positive. And I'll say that now, well, let's have a look at the RRP on this thing. Even just the basic, 16 gigabytes, 1,500 pounds. And I bought this in perfect condition used for 600 pounds for the 32 gigabyte, one terabyte version. So what you can actually get them for, if there's someone in your life now that that description fits the bill, I know someone, then that's an absolutely banging deal. And if my company had handed me this instead of this chunk, Plastic Fantastic i3, I'd be absolutely delighted with it. And honestly, they'd have far fewer frustrated people at their office door. I'll live with this for a little while. I'm gonna use it for my email, for my office stuff. I'm gonna try and get something out of all these AI features that they're pushing at us and watch this kind of ecosystem, Windows on ARM, grow because I think it's a significant shift. I think that there's certainly still a place for the x86 power on your desktop with a powerful graphics card. I still think there's a place for x86 in creator laptops, especially if we're gonna see iGPUs like we've got in the Ryzen 9 Strix Point and Strix Halo devices. And certainly for gaming, there's still a place for all that. But the shift to ARM for efficiency, it can't be ignored.